Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Pawn Chasso, and welcome back to my Kribis slash playthrough. That's not what I meant to say at all, I meant to say my Kribis tutorial slash playthrough, and instead I said Kribis slash playthrough, whatever. There are only like 10 of you to, that will notice this mistake, because more people probably will never watch this video. Not that I care anymore, because I feel quite liberated as I stated in the last video. I mean, I, can, I do care, I just not necessarily bought it. So, I'll just do whatever I like, and by that I mean a conquer of my foes as the music gets more menacing. And I'll also deal with all the notifications, you know, conquering plants does require you to go through a lot of paperwork. Of course, bureaucracy is always an issue, even in Empire. As Space Advanced Empire... Wait, what? What did they even say? Anyway, even in Empire like ours, bureaucracy is still a thing. It's, Guess what I was trying to say? Question mark. We'll just get along. I'll go with that. Yeah, that that's fine. That's fine. I'll just stop talking about this topic and I'll just deal with it. Anyway, diplomatic relationship with Bakba because they're now cordial. Haven't they been taken over by somebody? Where are Bakba actually? Bakba, not here. Not here. Those are the Reverend or whatever they're called, right? Yeah, I believe they are. Yeah. Yeah, Rem Remnant, that's how they're called. There are the other guys, this is the guys who love me with cores in inside themselves, and where the balls are back I don't know, I, I just guess I'm happy they like me, question mark? I don't even know what, what they are, but fine, like me. <laughs> I like myself, so you can like me too, I'll not be discriminatory in that matter. Anyway, let's go ahead and capture Deco, and this will actually bring us over the maximum number of systems we can have, because I just got an Ecus this time as well, and now approval will start to go down. As you can see, some of my systems are still ecstatic, but by some I mean two of them. Our heroes improved the situation on two other systems, but other than that, things are not the best. Thankfully, I am Kravis. I can eat people and be happier as a result, but there are also other things I can use as precautionary measures. For example, I can actually go for a cultural, a cultural invertex, which will allow me... Which will Give me some a bit more time before my empire starts being really unhappy with my conquests, which still makes no sense because I'm cravers. It would also make, give me access to the well-being foundation, although I'll tell you this right now, I am most likely not going to make it anywhere because, you know, anti-matter is kind of precious for me, ever so slightly. Also, water is precious for me too, so give me a moment. Mm. So... <sighs> So, as I was saying, this uh, tech, while kind of important, it will only postpone the in inevitable. And I'm about to start capturing systems like crazy, like in a few turns. And this thing will become basically entirely obsolete by that point. And World Bank Foundation will probably not have the resources to even make. So, grabbing this research, which costs a lot, as you can see, is not worth it. I'd rather just continue going for World with the Endless. I'm halfway there for the last 20 turns or, some, or so, and now I want to try and continue doing so. Of course, there's also dimensional folding, which would actually speed up the process, but again, that's expensive, and I don't... I'm not going for science victory. If I were, I would have gone for dimensional folding long ago. Now I'm just going for the sniper phone victory. And for that, sure, I could go for some better military, but my military is fine. Better invaders, per se, yeah, those would be kind of helpful, I admit, and for that, maybe, it would be a decent idea to go for the power of the endless. But, admittedly, this gives me both the ability to, to better attack systems because of having more feats and being able to outproduce more mana power, as well as just, uh, you know, flat out improve my empire's economy, and thus allow me to make more ships, which is why I pr prioritize Wolf of the Endless over the Might of the Endless. But that's just personal preference, I suppose. Of course, there are a lot of other things I could be doing, but I just like to go for that in this current particular situation we are in. So, either way, blockade trade routes because of the enemy being a lupus. I mean, so, I suppose some things are just unavoidable sometimes. Let's finish the movement of all of our ships and start besieging whatever we can. Yabella, well, I'm... Um, Sending somebody over there, right? Yeah, from Deco. So anyway, let's go ahead and declare... Oh, for crying out loud, I forgot! Well, either way, I, there was no way for me to invade this action with the wheel around it. I could have waited, I suppose, but... Uh, whatever. Also, this good enough ship looks really out of place. Because it's not using the right skin. But whatever! Whatever, I suppose, we didn't... We couldn't afford the paint job on the thing. Which uh, does sometimes happen, oh well. Anyway, the tactical we're going to go for. Well, actually, we're not. We're mostly using missiles, amusingly enough. 
So, versus this kind of opponent, I think we should really go for Barrage Fire with a bunch of ships in the low, uh, on the bottom fleet, and I'm not too keen on those guys in the, being at the top. We definitely, I definitely do want my hero to be in the middle flank. That's just... I, in fact, if I unlock ships, that's what my fleet will look like. And Reaper being here, well, it makes some degree of sense, but at the same time, I do want the Reaper to be able to shoot my other ships from the from taking too much damage so i'll change that and as for good enough good enough good enough i would like to be in the top fleet because it will be good enough in that row funnily enough and uh, everything else is pretty much hunky dory although i will put in an extra budget in the middle flank and this should be death the opponents with no problems and hopefully no losses as well not that i particularly care but you know, not losing ships is nice because it does keep your tanks alive, which I kind of sort of need for invasions in the future. Speaking of tanks, can I improve them? I not. What, oh, no. I don't have 25 Antamara. Right. This would be a huge increase, by the way. So I do want to go for it as soon as possible, but for the time being, I can leave that a bit. Also, I'm not unlocking airs right now, as you have definitely noticed, because this technology is kind of expensive. And the air units themselves are great, but I still would treat Amos as most cost-efficient counterparts, and I just rely on them alone. But of course, you know, differences in opinion are always uh, understandable and accepted, so if you feel differently, you can do it differently. Anyway, this really, that's a slicer fest, so we're definitely going to have it come creep close to the enemy, nice and easy. And the enemy is DED dead. Nice, good. Now you're going to have to restock on tanks, which is going to take a while, admittedly. So for the time being, you just sit here and, well, grab some more tanks. Meanwhile, we're going to destroy some extra unfallen ships, which is not going to be a problem whatsoever. We've got a lot of slices, and those slices are still as pesky scary as they have always been. Anyway, how many tanks do I actually have in all of my fleets? Well, I only have a handful. Could it be enough for an actual successful invasion? Maybe, I don't see a reason to try. So let's go ahead and do just that. Let's see how well we go. And of course, you have to keep in mind, sure, it looks like the enemy has nobody left guarding the system, but they will go for conscription. They always do. I mean, not always, but they most generally speaking will. And uh, that's what I'm expecting. And with their unfallen guardians, they might be putting up quite a bit of a fight. Still, I have uh, accumulated quite a few tanks in here, so let's hope this single blitz will be enough. It was! Yeah! Alright. I wonder if they... Have they got a... They did... Okay, now this is actually really strange. Because usually you see the AI go for conscription and not protect system when they have no troops remaining. I mean, if I knew they are gonna go for protect system, which actually really shocked me, I would have invaded them as soon as they dropped to zero defense, but... Uh, I mean, I'm not gonna complain, I guess? I just expected to be, them to be, you know, smart, not dumb. Oh well, it, it's, I, mean, I guess it's cool, I now have a new hostel that doesn't even have level 2 modernization. What is this nonsense? Like, I don't even, I don't even. Also speaking of which, how long until we get another subsidiary or another HQ? This is why you should have waited with Deep Space Holdings as an HQ. Uh, settlement, but whatever, I suppose what's done is done. Also, I'm <sighs> considering the resources I have access so far, I think I should stop waiting and hoping for getting any better ones and just go for Super Spaz Red Sun combo. Because by now I have nothing else to do, even though now I'm less concerned with food than I was in the past, because the time for growth has ended, now it's time for devouring and killing. Mostly killing. Anyway. For the time being, you just say you're just going to level up, and let's see, we are going to... As soon as I level him up, the system up, I'm going to ship some of the unfallen population over to the, my newly colonized system, to the, let's say, call it the north. Now, meanwhile, what do I have? Guardian Harvest, I'd rather not, I don't mind the Guardians being here whatsoever. Also, my mouse was stuck for a second, which was rather weird. Now, anyway, this system is actually extremely productive, so what I'm going to do, and I'll do this quite gladly, is install microwave pipes on it, even though, yes, it does cost Atamata and Adamantian, so be it, I'll be okay with that part for a moment. Additionally, I will reassign my hero to this system. In fact, I might do it right now, unless there is something I need my heroes for. So before I do anything, let's have a quick look-see. First things first, I need to increase my 
Uh, strategic resource uh, output. Output. So you can be a fleet. That's fine. So you are going to have to resign for the spin pro project, which I'm not too keen on. I'll because it's going to drop my influence production. But maybe I'll do something in the influence system to counter that. Either way, sludge, sludge center on both of these planets is going to be quite helpful, giving me a bit of extra of both of those resources, which is really important to be frankly honest with you. Echo habitats because why not? And Chegai program you don't have enough time to make the that that's fine. Alrighty then, so with that out of the way, Farim, you also need to give me some extra production on strategic resources. That's really important. And also you also should get some extra speed productive thingy going. And last but by no means least, should you feed? I think you should feed because mutinous is way worse of an, uh, than what I would like the system to have when it comes to approval settings. It's really not good enough. Also, because of how productive the system is, I mean 1.2k in industry production, that's ridiculous. So this will probably be my main production hub for quite a while, even though, okay, those plants are depleting slowly but surely, still they have not depleted yet. And I can increase the last one a little bit by doing this kind of trick. And maybe even this kind of trick, because 45 tens is still a lot. And this way I give my the other two planets extra several tens. Yeah, like the 16 tens, 18 tens, 30 tens, that's optimization right there, if I may say so myself. 6 tens over here, this is perfect. So, I'm going to try and make the system as good and productive as possible. This will be the place where I make my devastating fleet. So, with that out of the way, do I want to go for exotic rations? This will lower my food production, but at the same time, I feel like I can do that. It, there's no re real reason not to do so. So it's feeling pinks will increase my food production for by quite a considerable amount, I would say. And the hive hole, uh, I mean, it's uh, just relatively cheap to produce, and this here is quite expensive, isn't it? 50 dust? Yeah, that's a lot of dust saved with hive hole right there. In fact, I might uh, just flat out prioritize it, but now nah, exotic rations will be done as well, so that's good. Any other system that has to decrease resources that I am currently mining, there's titanium right here, so I'll definitely grab that real quick. Sludge, slack and sludge center, thank you very much. Anything else you can do for me? Well, actually not much. You're all either depleted or almost depleted, which is kind of pathetic, if I may say so myself. So what I can do with you is just have your conscript and uh, use you as cannon fodder of sorts. Maybe not always necessarily a cannon fodder, but nevertheless I'm going to use you. Anyway, my plants are about to be completely depleted, with the exception of, of course, this ash plant, which is good, I would say, actually. Uh, wait a second, those guys should definitely be on this planet. And alright, I'll keep this plant healthy forever, because there's... Hey, that's, wait a second, that's not what I meant to do at all. Uh, okay, no. Four of you, go over here, there. Yeah, there. I'll keep this plant healthy forever, because why not? I don't necessarily need it. I already have other system that is being overexploited for production purposes, so this thing can just be a thing I'm going to give you a cohabitance and then we'll deal with you on the next turn. Any other system I have that... Oh yeah, Yibela, of course, a very important system that keeps being blockaded, but nevertheless is, as I said, very important for my plans. Spin setter on the other planet, that's also going to be nice. Let's put everybody I can on the Arad planet. Nice and easy. Make sure I get as many benefits from, you know, exploiting it as humanly possible. National Museum is not going to be very useful since I'm about to, since, you know, I'm actually kind of low in terms of approval. So, yeah, I can, of course, eat, but I don't want to eat anybody on the system just yet. So, for the time being, exotic rushes, now I need to repopulate quickly. Microwave pipes are an option. And I'm gaining a decent amount of antimatter now, so I guess I'll go for microwave pipes over there. Alright, you just said, uh, I think I want to just kill the Vodiani now, so I'm gonna go for Alyov and wipe them out. I think that's what I'm, what is in, plan in store for now, for them, for now. I mean, right now. I mean, I don't even know what I mean. Okay, you guys, do you love me? You don't? Alright then, this is war for you. Damn, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and people should love me more in my empire. It's very important to declare war on everything that moves, or breathes, or exists, or even doesn't exist, if possible. Because your people will love you for it. Anyway, let's see. Adamantian on a ready planet. Well, this is the reason why I wanted to colonize this system in the first place. So yes, of course I'll try to colonize this planet ASAP. And, uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just let you do that. I mean, sh all right, I'll buy out a few things, because uh, that's uh, really just... 
kind of important that I do. All right, I'll just buy drone networks, I suppose, because I can't afford anything else. But drone networks themselves are going to help the system quite considerably, I'd say. Especially with, you know, it being eaten by a craver. War, then you definitely need to increase your... Uh, what's it called? The maintenance production, that's certainly a good thing. And I can explore the binary moons, which I will do, sure. Anything else I have to do in here, you will be explode... Explode it? No, hopefully not explode it. Depleted in 49 tests, but I'm probably going to increase that death counter in a while. Cohabitants, however, are more important for the time being. Also, let's see if I have a system that is being that has too much population and doesn't give me much. And my primary target for this is mutation in host. So let's have a quick look-see. Mutation itself, uh, it's days of glory have passed. It's clearly no longer the top dog. It's uh, almost entirely depleted except for the sterile toxic planet. But the other two planets are just a bunch of waste. So I, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to ship this population into systems I conquer from other races to overexploit them to the maximum potential so I can get as many benefits from them as possible. So for instance, I'm going to ship them to Albany. This is one of the two things you can do. Of course, what you could do instead is you could keep Albany in my position, of course, clean of cravers or at least as clean of cravers as it is humanly possible so that this system remains your late game like placed for you to generate income. But keep in mind, even if I do ship Cravers into this system, it will take them several turns, in fact, probably dozens of turns, to completely deplete the system. I'm planning to win the game before that happens. So, yes, I do want to just ship as many Cravers into Ibani as humanly possible. So, for th that reason, people from Mutation, yep, you are going to go straight to Ibani, I believe it was called. Yeah. Right now, I don't think there is enough spot in Albany to explode those guys, but as my people rule over Albany, the amount of dead bodies on the streets will drastically increase, and I can also go for Echo Habitats to help with uh, the Craver colonization effort. And as soon as I'm done with level 2 modernization, I'm going to send a lot of Unfallen into Echis to help it grow and also to, you know, help it grow. That, that, that's it. I wish I could say that I have more reasons to do that, but no, it's just that I wanted to grow. And there is nothing else to say about that. Alrighty then. My fleets, let's see, I've got a Siege Tower. I'm suddenly going to send into Ceres. That's going to be a thing. And I've got two fleets. Well, one fleet I'll keep over here guarding Ibani. The other is going to go straight to... I think also series to guard my siege towers and as for you this says you can guard yourselves and also keep up the siege now this is might be an interesting battle not as big as some of the battles we've seen but i feel like watching a battle so let's optimize our fleet first and foremost barrage fire is what we're going to go for let's uh, let the ai decide how it wants to split our fleets with reaper with both reapers in the middle which is an interesting choice not necessarily wrong though but only two budget ships in the top lane, which makes them extremely exposed and vulnerable, and two budgets in the bottom one, which uh, makes them quite efficient at destroying the enemy ships as well. I admittedly, but the ones in the top lane are the ones that worry me. So, what I'm going to do is like this. I'm going to make top and middle lane equal with strength, but give both of those budget ships a reaper to shield them, and the bottom lane is the one that is going to apply most of the damage for the middle lane. In fact, I'm going to reassign one of the budget from the bottom lane to the middle lane so that it can have more opportunities to fire, since this budget ship will have less opportunities to fire on the top lane, and uh, it's only here to give me the extra bonus from having flotilla advantage, so yeah, there we go. Let's watch that so that I have an opportunity to drink some water because my throat is certainly thirsty. Can a throat be thirsty? I am thirsty, my throat cannot be thirsty. Although, maybe it is. What if it is? Oh boy. Anyway, without any more indo-indo, so let's go ahead and skip to action as I drink my water. Mm. I like that shot. I like fighting in this kind of, uh, with this kind of battleground. Well, not a battleground, but rather well, background. Oh yeah, that one! Because it looks fantastic, and... If anybody says otherwise, I'll just uh, pretend I don't hear him, because that's pure nonsense. It is beautiful. Well, I do have to say, the enemy is doing really well for themselves. Let's have a quick look at the overview camera and maybe see what is happening. So my Reaper in the middle lane is taking a bit of a beating. My bottom lane is helping... Oh, wow! Wait a second, they're using titanium missiles! 
Oh, I missed that part. That's actually really good to know. How are you doing? How dead are you? Almost dead. But the enemy lost both of their big ships now, so it should be fine. Either way, this was actually really surprising. But good to know. I mean, good to know, I say. It's no longer really all that relevant knowledge, to be entirely honest, because the Unfallen have lost the capital. They're no longer somebody I should even consider as a potential threat. And I haven't even... Wait, have I lost this Reaper or not? It kind of blinked at the end of battle. I have not, but it took quite a bit of a pounding. It's fine, though. It's repaired some of its HP, I can see. Anywho, 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 I've got some extra fleets, so... With this guy, I mean, I can invade Varek, but it don't have free population in it, and I honestly don't really care about Varek. I mean, sure, it's a staging ground for the enemy to launch their uh, attacks from, but rather than caring about that, I need to prepare to take over Dane and Lyra, so I can increase uh, my strategic resource production, so that then I can create some carriers. That would be awesome. So, how would my ships like to go to there? Through Scythe, I see. All right. What about those ships? Do they want to go directly or through Scythe? They want to go directly. So what I'm going to do is send my ships over from host to there. And Delphinus is also has a good enough to send, which is nice. Now, as for you, this says, I don't need to protect Deco. I, frankly speaking, don't care about Deco. I'll just have a quick look at what I can do with Deco to make it a bit less awful. It is going to be quite awful, though. Keep that in mind. There's a quest. I... whatever. Be a quest. I don't necessarily care about here. To be entirely honest, uh, you're about to lose a Vodian, yes, well, hopefully the other one will survive and repopulate. Now, let's go ahead and invade you, dear Sam. Man, nice and quickly, nice and quickly. Battleships, well, that calls for a barrage fire action. And the enemy is so dead, it's not even funny. I mean, it is for me, but not for him. Certainly not for him. Alright, with that out of the way, are we actually done with the first 10 of this video? Almost, not quite, though, which is... Somewhat ridiculous, of course, but there were a lot of things to do, and as our empire grows, as you probably have seen so far in all of my videos, yeah, the time to finish tens might increase, although hopefully not by much, and so as we should have faster tens. We're bound to have faster tens, at least that is my hope at any rate. Alrighty then. Population collection bonus for the Unfallen. I wonder why I got that, or rather how. And also for Unfallen. Yeah, I got it twice in a row, because I unlocked two of the population collection bonuses in a row. That's what happened right there. Alrighty then, so, dear, dear Unfallen, how low can you fall? You can fall pretty low, and you're gonna die. So, Parash Fire, just like last time, it should work nicely. Yep, yep, let's go ahead and move all of my ships that can move. And the battle ships, yeah, I'm not going to match battle ships with siege towers, that is a recipe for disaster. Let's keep up the siege for a while. Make this a guaranteed kill. Keep those guys, I don't think I can, I need to keep them here. I can send them to goblins, in fact. Although they're not the strongest fleet I have, the strongest fleet I have is this. So I send those guys to Ceres, or Ceres, or how are you supposed to pronounce it. And my main fleet is going to go straight to goblins and prepare for another invasion. Of course, this does slow down. Actually, it does it supposedly it doesn't slow down the siege, but it should. Maybe I, I I just expect. I think it's just the UI not refreshing fast enough. Is what's happening there. Anyway, Cygnus, how are you doing? You're very slowly falling. Well, that's all right. I'll just keep it up the siege for the time being. This scout ship is there. Oh, I know why it didn't do that. I meant to do. And it's actually a pretty big deal. So I'm going to have to deal with that ASAP. So, you know how I'm supposed to snipe the enemy systems? I also need to know where the enemy systems are in order to snipe them, right? And I need to have scouts to do that for me, but usually when I try to send the scouts that way, they died because they were attacked and they had nowhere to run. So you know what I could do to deal with that? I can design a new line of scouts, a better line of scouts, a ridiculous line of scouts, in fact. So if we go to a guard class, Tell me what this is, if not a perfect scout, with ridiculous amount of 19 movement, which will let it just hop from place to place with no stops, no breaks, no nothing stopping it. And at the same time, it can also, you know, fend for itself. As in, it's actually going to have to some pretty good def defenses, to uh, that mean that it will be basically untouched by anything. In fact, I'll just give it all the titanium I can give it, because the enemy is using missiles only anyway. 
And I can also give it something to, you know, defend itself. Uh, now, I would love to give it kinetic weapons, but my kinetic weapons are crap. So what I'm going to do instead is I can either give it some really good sync lasers or some decent basic decoy torpedoes. Now, because the enemy is using missiles, what I want to do with this scout ship is move in at close range as quickly as possible to avoid as much of the firepower as possible. And at close range, guess what is... Hey, my mouse died. Guess what is the best? That's right. Ibrut Beat Beam. Oh yeah. Of course, that's still not very optimal, but this ship isn't supposed to be a battleship per se, it's just supposed to be a scout. And it just so happens that it will also, you know, get uh, a few kills whenever possible, maybe, as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and... Uh, Create a design. Oh yeah, I need to name this. Uh, how do I name this? I'll drink some water and uh, think about it. I don't know. I, I, like I, I don't know. I have no idea. So I'll just send other nails over to scout the enemy for me. So Trireem is busy eating itself. I mean, that's fine, each to their own, I suppose. It's going to take a while putting people in pits, but it's certainly, as you can see, very important for me to do as quickly as humanly possible. So I'll definitely do just that. Um, right then, so who can make me some scout ships at a fast pace? Of course, Rarium is number one pro uh, target, but Warden and Host are both also fairly productive. Warden most, uh, more, way more than Host, and where the boss is War- That's Warden?! You're desperate, I mean, I suppose it makes sense, but you're about to deplete yourself. Still, this is a good place to actually to make scouts, since, you know, it's right uh, near the border. And I do want to set scouts in groups of two, because, well, they will be able to watch out for each other in that case. And the enemy will not be able to focus fire on just a single ship, hopefully. And when they do reach the enemy line, they will actually be able to deal a considerable amount of damage. They will be, like, the most tankiest scouts you can possibly imagine so that's what i'm going for with that Alrighty then my income how good is it seven uh, not good enough on either account 27 of hyperion 20 of titanium this is getting good this is getting almost to a point where i can keep baking ships every 10 and i'd like to be able to do that actually i'm not quite there yet because also there's the issue of low manpower of course i can keep turning people into soldiers which i will do in a moment uh, you just said uh, siege towers. Well, you're supposed to siege, so do the sieging. Essa, I'm probably going to have to turn some of your people into soldiers, I expect. But firstly, let's put the Kagoras on the dust load. And with that out of the way, I'm going to. Yeah, put, turn people into soldiers because I certainly need uh, that. Good enough over here as well. Good for you, I suppose, that you're good enough and you have good people. Let's see, I, wow, I have very few Cravers in the system. That's kind of surprising, actually. Either way, I do want to start gaining as many benefits from those Cravers as humanly possible, so let's go ahead and put a Craver to this system, because, I mean, 75 turns until depletion, that's still a long time, if I may say so myself. So let's have a quick look, see here. How can I distribute this Craver population best? Well... Let's keep one Mavros in here. Let's go ahead and send a Harsham over to this planet and, and an extra Kraber to make this planet defeat faster. Sure, but also give me some extra benefits. And as I said, in 38 turns, I expect this game to be cut over and done with. And two Kravers for this planet as well. That's 29. I should still be done with this play for 29 turns, I would expect, so that's fine. And uh, let's just make sure that no cr more cravers appear in this plant so that it doesn't exploit too quickly, despite all that I just said. And this should be good. Now the system should be extremely productive and uh, very, very nice. I don't want to use feeding pits or chain program on, on it, though. So what I'm going to go for is uh, plant cracker factory for the time being. Or actually, I'm going to go for fab fabrication lasses for one turn. And since it's doing that, it can also give me some item nails, if it can. Ah, it cannot really. Not this turn anyway, but fabrication lasses is certainly going to help. Good enough, please go over there, nice and easy. And Essa, actually, rather than change the gang program, what you need is you need a Reaper to help my ships reach their target over down there as quickly as possible. So let's go ahead and make a Reaper. Now, as for my home system, this is a place where I will actually go for chain gang program. 
And I'll reassign my hero over to Iron Bunny because I need this place to not be completely mutinous. So, Mark and Ballad, this is your new assignment. Try to keep this system alive for as long as humanly possible. Now, the extra Unfallen I have, I'm going to send them over to what's this place called? Echius. Alrighty, then you're going to Echius DSS. Enjoy your trip and help Echius become a nice and powerful system from which I can gain more power. Because this is what this game is all about, after all, isn't it? Am I recording? Yes. Oh, boy. For a second I was sure I didn't press the record button and I was terrified because I hate when that happens. And it does sometimes happen, mind you. And it, I tell you, it's one of the most annoying things that can happen to a video, to a caster. Especially since usually when I forgot to press the record button, I feel like I did a really good job recording. Except for the fact that I didn't record anything. Which is always very sad. Okay, I can't go for changing my program on you. So, should I feed on you? I already fed on you. Yeah, I did. Well, alright, go for microwave pipes, I suppose, for the time being. You cannot quite match, but I can move the budget over this place and have a good enough uh, attach with this, attach itself to this fleet, and it's now more powerful. Let's send it to you, Bella, and the guard, you, Bella. Well, this lonely budget ship is going to guard Lupus from just random small ships like this leecher over there that will try to blockade my trade networks. Even though trade, I'm not really relying on trade, but it is useful for, you know, this luxury stuff. And I think yeah, I should stop being... There is, I should stop having hope of getting extra luxuries. I'm like, I mean, Foyd, I might get, but just use it for level 3, potentially. Like, I was really... I'm still hoping for blue cap mode. Actually, why am I not gathering... I am gathering blue cap mode now. A 2 per 10. I'm going to get more. Yeah, let's wait. Let's wait just for a bit more so that I don't have to use red sang, but instead I can use blue cap and super spats. Ideally, I would like to use trans wine, actually, but... Trans wine? Oh, wine? Wine? I don't remember how it's called. Let's find it. Trans... Uh, where the boss am I getting that from? No, seriously, where am I getting it from? I'm getting, I am getting it from... Oh, there we go. Transvine. Alright. Either way, that's where I'm getting all of my Transvine from. And it doesn't look like I'm about to get more of it anytime soon. There's another source of it, but it's not very plentiful. Hydros also has some, though. Quite a decent amount. So maybe I'll go for approval science combo. I'll still not be able to make too many of those improvements. But some will be made, which is good. I think I can go for the next turn now. Alright, I need desperately to go for more chain gun programs though because I'm not I can't keep up with the tank production right now. Uh I then again 26 tanks on this fleet now it still can have more tanks and I still wanted to have more tanks, so let's wait for a little bit more. Bomber crop, that's absolutely amazing. This is going to be extremely useful, so let's not even think about it and give myself some more Cedric resource generation. Oh, uh, actually, you're so cute in thinking you can do anything to me. Because you really cannot. So let's go ahead and do that. Scythe has been colonized? Really? You're colonizing Scythe now? Out of all the things you could colonize, you colonize Scythe. This is ridiculous. Anyway, let's go ahead and destroy the enemy fleet because it's pathetic and it offends me with its uh, mere presence. So this should be an easy one. Alright, Lupus, please go ahead and destroy this invader. This should be, again, an easy one. Brush fire right there. Yvela, of course, is besieged again, as it always is. But we can remedy that real quick, and I can see my fleet has reached Hydras. But we'll deal with that in a moment. I have budget ships, so let's go ahead and destroy the enemy from afar, without them being able to do anything about that whatsoever. They run away, as they always do. Nice and easy. Lemon squeezy. Now, Hydras is going to be a fun battle, I imagine. Let's see, what are they rocking? Are they still rocking missiles and shields? Yes, they are. Yes, they are. But it's uh, going to be, like I said, a pleasant, enjoyable encounter, I expect. And this is a really crappy fleet I have over here, so let's make... Let's try to do the very best I can. I think my advantage would be in Barrage Fire right now. We're all using missiles, and I'm somewhat countering missiles. The enemy is not countering missiles whatsoever. In fact, why is that good enough to have any shoots? I don't know. I should really change that before I forget about the fact, because you really don't need to have... Oh yeah, you don't have shields, it's because of my other uh, ships, I assume. Did I give? I don't even remember what Reapers have. Do they actually have shield generators? No, they don't. Huh. Wait a second. How come you have shield defenses? Maybe it's an old version that... Yeah, it's good enough 1.0, not 2.0. I see. I understand. 
either way, Barrage Fire is what I'm going to go for. Obviously, we are going to watch this battle because I love battles between Quavis and United Empire. They've, it feels very canon to me. Alright, we need a budget on the bottom flank. That's uh, definitely a given. We need two of them, in fact. I'm going to move Slicer to the top lane. It's going to be most useful there. They're hero to the middle lane. And good enough in the middle with a Reaper assisting it. I feel like the Reaper should maybe be in the top lane. But no, just one good enough in the top lane though is somewhat risky. But middle lane has to hold at all costs. So I will have more ships in the middle lane. And bottom lane is going to be my place from which I deal damage to the enemy. Because I don't think the enemy has enough ships to put anybody in the bottom. Or even if they do, I don't expect them to put too many. So anyway, let's go ahead and watch it. Oh, they did put somebody, and they actually put something that's uh, kind of scary. Uh, whatever, they have extra shield absorption, which is would be a problem if not for the fact that I'm mostly using missiles, and they deal less damage. So all of this is actually really good for me. I I like what I see. Anyway, let me drink the... Oh, wow, I'm almost out of water. Anyway, that's, uh, I suppose, uh, that's half decent timing. Like, hi there, enemy. So I can enjoy this cup of water. As we get ready for obliteration and the camera clips for my ship. That's it, I'm now officially out of water. Maybe I should make it a rule that every time I run out of manpower, I also run out of water because it seems fitting I should never allow my empire to run out of manpower because I am using it quite a lot in my expansion efforts. Also, there is quite a bit of lag as you may have noticed. This is most likely tied to the fact that we use barrage fire, which, uh, by the way, it's either has been fixed, but hasn't been fixed very well, or, which is most likely, in fact, the case, uh, the fix for it is coming in the next patch. Because I don't think I have seen the patch since I reported the issue and the devs have acknowledged the fact that they are actively working on the issue of patching the barrage fire back, which you can see in action right now with the frame rate dropping to literally two, which is somewhat annoying. Can we go to overview camera and, and fix this issue? I don't think it, that, it works like that. No, it doesn't. That's really a huge shame, because I was hoping to watch an awesome battle, and because of this uh, barrage fire, it's not happening. Also, we're not doing too hot in the top lane, it's actually falling apart. Even though we did destroy the enemy's middle lane, since, you know, it wasn't exactly difficult, but uh, top lane is uh, not holding. Neither is bottom lane, so this is actually, yeah, this went really well for the enemy. Even though all of the enemy ships were destroyed, I also lost a lot more than I actually expected. But I also gained a lot, let's be entirely honest about this one. So let's actually have a quick look at the detailed results, because I want to know what happened. I mean, we've seen the fact that, well, the top lane collapsed and my bottom lane wasn't actually able to output enough damage to help anybody and it didn't have a tank. So what I should have done is just not put any budgets in the bottom lane and just hide them behind the wall of uh, tankiness in the middle lane. My mistake, I didn't expect the enemy to put this kind of sh cruiser in the bottom and to leave middle lane empty with just a single corvette in it. I guess the strategy was so stupid it actually worked! It does happen so that is, I guess. Anyway... Wait a second, what happened to my missile damage? I had a lot of missiles, don't tell me they did no damage. Because I don't believe that one bit. Where well, according to this graph, I dealt no damage with my missiles. I mean, I know I didn't have that many missiles, actually, but I did have some that some Wait, did I have any missiles? Yeah, I did have missiles. The Reaper has missiles. And there no damage with missiles. Oh, because I thought this... Okay, well, I had the budget. That's... Wait a second. I thought budgets have missiles. I was sure that budget have missiles. I'll be entirely honest with you. Have I been wrong this entire video? Do I really not remember what my ships are made of? Wait a second, edit. Hey, they have lasers, not missiles. Holy balls! I was sure they have missiles! Man, today my brain does not remember facts correctly. Well, that would explain why everything went so poorly then. Wouldn't it? I thought I was fighting missiles with missiles. Ha! Huh. Alright. Good to know. Holy balls. Alright. Okay. Alright. In that case, I should have gone for title strategy, actually. I was sure I have missiles. I'm really surprised. Anyway, the enemy is dead, so I can go ahead and resume the attack. Destroy the patrol ship uh, with title, I suppose. It doesn't matter now. You know, the Empire hates me for it, but I don't care. 
I mean, I am literally trying to murder them, so why would I care if they try, to, uh, if they are angry with me or not? More battleships incoming, they'll wipe me out of here, but whatever, I can heal my hero instantly, I have plenty of dust saved up for that. Can I... invade? I probably will not succeed. But let's try it anyway, since those ships will be destroyed, so I might as well deploy all the tanks I have available right now. Let's go for... do I want to go for guerrilla or preemptive bombing? Let's go for preemptive bombing. Weaken the enemy as much as possible, try to destroy my defensive infrastructure. Was not able to do that, but that's fine, we're going to continue the assault just because, as I said, my ships will be destroyed next turn, most assuredly. So yeah, there is that. And when that happens, I'm going to reassign my hero over to this fleet, so that, you know, it can move much faster. Also, I do have a repair with it already. And let us change those ballots so that they actually use missiles, shall we? And also, hey there, oh yeah, I wasn't planning on using this slot. So anyway, let's give them at least some missiles. In fact, let's give them all the missiles. And this upgrade should not cost a lot of money to do, so let's go ahead and do just that. Now those battle will be battle ships will be missile ships, and this should confuse the enemy a lot and also help me with the invasion process quite considerably. I'll be totally honest, as you have noticed already, I thought that's what I was already doing, but I guess I was not. Anyway, since there are a lot of things to do this turn, and they might be kind of boring, like queuing up so useless uh, production, and we're at 41 minute mark, I'm just going to end this video here, and do things off camera that are boring. Ladies and gentlemen, it was Ponchas, also known as the Mighty Mix Farmer. One host team is down, the other is kind of down, although it might reappear soon. And I'm getting ready, oh, I am getting ready to find more. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you online.